Hey, what's going on guys? Okay, so you just heard me playing some Dickie Betts inspired volume swells over a familiar backing track and I'm assuming you're all here because you want to learn how to do the same thing. So let's go. Okay, there's two methods of doing these volume swells. One involving one pickup, another method involving two pickups. I'm going to show you how to do both. Let's uh, take a look at this footage right now of Dickie Betts doing method number one, which just involves the neck pickup. Check this footage out. Okay, cool. So there are two fundamentals to doing these volume swells, and these are constant fundamentals, whether we're talking about the one pickup method or the two pickup method. And those fundamentals are technique and timing. So let's talk about technique right now. Technique involves just using your, your pinky to rotate the, vo the neck volume pot. Okay, so in that footage we just watched, Dickie was strictly on the neck pickup, and he's using the neck volume pot to produce these swells. At the same time, he's using a flat pick here, and he is striking the string. Uh, in this case, I'm striking a, an A note on the B string 10th fret, and he's slowly rolling in that volume pot like that. So I'm gonna leave my lapel mic on so you guys can hear when I pluck the string. Hopefully it'll come through acoustically like that. Um, so you can hear when I'm plucking the string versus when the, the roll starts on the swell. Okay, so it goes something like this. All right, it's almost instantaneous. That's the trick right there. There's really not a lot to it, but it's, it's pretty critical that you want to keep this pinky, you want to keep this finger right here, you want to keep it on the edge of the pot as much as you possibly can. Um, if you, when, you're, when you're first learning to do these, you're going to find that your, your finger wants to slide up on the, on the more barrel part up here, which I think is difficult. It's, to me, you can get a better grip on the actual knob. If you're, if you're grabbing it down here on the edge. And you can see that if you look close, you can see I've actually taken a small piece of gaff tape and cut a very tiny strip of it and run it along the underside edge of this knob. That's just something I came up with. It gives me a little extra grip. It's almost like, you know, like sandpaper or grip tape on a skateboard. Kind of gives you a little extra something to, to grab onto rather than just this you know, the, the slick knob by itself, which is especially important if your hands are dry or it's cold, that type of thing. It, it really helps me at, at gigs. So the idea is you want to just pluck and, and you want to, the, the volume pot has got to be on zero. Okay. That's where the, that's where the real magic comes from. Cause if you're, if the volume pot's already up, you can still get a swell a little bit, right? But you're you're missing that violin bow attack. That's what really makes these things work is that violin bow kind of attack. Right? So you got to have the pot all the way on zero. And then as soon as you strike the string, you want to roll it in. It's going to take a lot of practice. It's it this is one of the more difficult techniques I've ever learned. It takes quite a bit of coordination, especially if you have, you know, hands that are on the medium to smaller side like mine are. Um, it's going to be really difficult as you, as you go down or as you work your way up to the lower strings. See, I have a, I have a hard time hitting this D string and rolling the volume knob at the same time because my hand is, I mean, it's pretty much stretched out to the max to make that work. I mean, an A string is like, woo, that's a real stretch. Fortunately, these swells sound better on the higher strings, on the plain strings. And Dickie did these everywhere. He would do them in, in a major context, in a minor context, uh, in Elizabeth Reed, um, whipping pose, things like that. He's, you know, playing out of Dorian. We've talked about that in, in other lessons. So, um, so that's really the, the way Dickie's doing it. He's doing it with a single pickup. And the advantage to doing it with a single pickup is that you get a slower taper, 
when you're when you're rolling that volume pot in. So it gives you more control. You can you can really fine tune you know with a fine tooth comb exactly how much swell and how much volume you want and it gives you a really gentle attack. This is what he was doing on Fillmore East at the beginning of Elizabeth Reed. It's it's very obvious that he was using this this single pickup technique. And both techniques have their pluses and minuses, but the, the big advantage to this technique, uh, using the single pickup technique, is that you, know, you do get those gentle swells, that gentle attack, and you can really fine tune it. The disadvantage to the single pickup technique is that if you're in a low gain situation, like a, like a fender amp, uh, like a black face fender amp, you know, that's only turned up about halfway, you're not going to have a lot of gain. So it's going to be more difficult to produce these, these swells in a low gain situation. So there's a way to get around that using the two pickup method, which is a trick that my buddy Leroy Parnell showed me. So let's talk about the second method right now. Okay. All right. So the Dickie Betts style volume swell is using the two pickup method. So let's do that. So what you want to do, you want to switch your toggle switch on your Les Paul or your SG style guitar to the middle. Okay, so we're going to be working on both pickups. And so the way, the way Parnell taught this to me was he said, okay, you want to take your, your bridge pickup volume knob and you want to put it on about eight. You don't want to turn it all the way up. You want to put it on about eight. and then go back to your, your neck pickup volume knob, and that's of course gonna stay on zero. All right, so we'll do the same exact swell we were doing a minute ago. Okay, now the major difference to the two pickup method is that the attack is gonna be much faster. Okay, you're gonna have a totally different taper on the, on the volume pot as you're rolling it up. So you can hear it comes in much faster. It's still not obviously as deliberate as a flat pick attack, you still got that smooth volume knob or, or volume swell effect. But it's much more pronounced. In addition to that, the tone is brighter too because you're now you're rolling in the bridge pickup. So you're going to have a much brighter tone overall than if you were just using the bass pickup. So this is a really, really good technique. And I use this technique a lot when I'm playing through a Fender style amp in a lower gain situation, a clean tone, because you're going to get a much quicker attack and you're going to get that volume Quicker. You're going to get that volume. You're going to, going to get that volume up to cruising speed a lot faster than if you were just using the single pickup method. So I'm not sure Dickie ever actually used this method. He, I'm sure he probably did at some point in his career. But as you saw in the footage earlier, I think his preferred method is the is the single pickup, bass pickup method. But this two pickup method certainly works. You know just as good and um, you know actually I think as you're learning these the two pickup method might be a little bit easier because you're gonna get a quicker bang for your buck as you're learning this it's it's you, it doesn't take as much movement on the volume knob it doesn't take nearly as much movement on the knob on the two pickup method as it does to do the same thing All right with the single pickup method. On the single pickup method, you're gonna get much more of that violin sustain type tone. I prefer it, and, and when you work up to it, when you get comfortable with, uh, comfortable with this technique and comfortable with rolling your pinky down here, um, you might end up preferring the single pickup method as well, but when you're first learning it and you, you don't have that much control over the knob yet, um, the two pickup method is great. It's great to really get you started on that. So don't forget to get yourself some gaff tape. Mine happens to be green. That doesn't really matter. You can use any color, but get some gaff tape and put it on that knob. If you've got a Gibson speed knob, like one of those big square knobs, like off a of gold top or a Les Paul custom, that would be even better. Just gives you that much more real estate to roll your finger on. I'm just using the stock knob here and it works. Another couple tips I wanted to mention to you guys about this technique. Uh, this technique is going to be really hard on equipment. You're going to, you're going to go through a lot of volume pots. You're going to wear these things out a lot if you do this technique a lot. 
Um, one thing that was uh, suggested to me by the good folks over at RS Guitars is um, a product called Deoxit Gold. I would pick up a can of this stuff. It's not cheap. It's about 15, 16 bucks for this little tiny can. You can get it on Amazon. You can get it on Mauser, Sweetwater, uh, all those types of places you can sell this stuff. But you want to get the Deoxit. You make sure you get the gold, um, not the other, not any of the other kinds. You want to get the, the Deoxit gold. And you want to spray that in your pot. It'll help to lubricate it. It'll keep them uh, sounding good keep them from getting scratchy, it'll keep them lubricated and smooth and, and make them last a whole lot longer and operate a whole lot smoother too. This technique works a lot better with loose, uh, I'd say loose pots, but pots with a, uh, a, a low torque factor on them. In other words, pots that are easier to turn rather than like the stiff, some of the newer pots that Gibson's putting on, some of the custom shop guitars these days are real stiff. And this is difficult to do with a stiff pot, guys. I mean, the looser you can get that pot, uh, the more worked in you can get it, the, the easier this technique is going to be to pull off. It's a really cool thing to do. It's a, it's a neat trick. It is pretty much a trick. Um, you know, it's not so much like a technique, but it, it's, it's a pretty expressive trick that you can use to not only wow the audience, but you can, you can really create some expressive motifs and, and melodic lines with this. I mean, Dickie certainly did. You can pull up any given Dickie Betts recording and he's probably going to work this technique at least a couple times a night. It was one of his big contributions to rock and roll. Him and I guess Roy Buchanan and people like that. But he was certainly one of the originators of it. So anyway, that's your Dickie Betts volume swells, guys, on a Les Paul. You can certainly do this same technique on a Stratocaster, on a Telecaster, just about any guitar. But it's, it's nice on a Les Paul because the volume knob is just right here. It's not that much of a stretch. really fun thing to do. So get yourself some gaff tape, put it on your knob, get some deoxid gold, clean those pots up, spray them down, get them slicked up and lubricated and start going to town guys. Okay so the other critical aspect to doing this, we talked about the technique right using your your pinky and keeping it on the side of the pot over here but the second critical aspect that we need to talk about is timing. So what you're going to find is that you need to strike the string a little bit before the note where you intend the note to start. In other words, you need to anticipate the note you're going to play just a fraction. And the reason is because you got to allow a little bit of time. You got to compensate a little bit of time for that swell to happen. It's not going to be instant, right? So if you want the swell to begin right on the, on the one, of, of the measure, okay, right on the downbeat of the one. You need to really be picking that, that note on just, you know, on not even the upbeat of the four, but slightly, slightly after the upbeat of the four, right? Just a fraction before the one. And it's gonna take some adjusting to get used to, but you're gonna have to play that note first, and then the swell starts, right? So really slowly, it's, that's what it looks like slow. But, you know, Dickie's doing some pretty, pretty intricate lines, like playing eighth notes. That kind of thing, right? So in order to do that, you gotta, you're going to have to anticipate that note just a little bit, and it's going to take an enormous amount of coordination to get your, your pick uh, your, your thumb and your index finger, which are working the pick, to coordinate with your pinky, which is working the volume knob. Okay, so your, your right hand is really going to be doing two things at once, and it's going to take some brain power, and it's going to take some, some muscle memory. You're going to have to train that right hand. But technique and timing, those are the two main factors in doing this trick to really sell it properly the way the way Dickie did it and uh, there's no shortcut for it guys I wish there was but really you, you're just gonna have to sit down and and work it out and work these lines out you know just you could even try it with like major scales right I mean just work through real simple melodies do it re start real slow 
Roll back down. And sometimes you may find it's necessary to, to reset your finger a little bit. I try not to move my finger on the knob as much as possible and that, that gaff tape helps with that. It really helps me stay kind of anchored. You don't want your finger to slip and slide on that knob because then you're gonna, what happens is as you're, as you're first messing with it, you're gonna lose where the, where the one is, you're gonna lose where the zero is, right? And you, you gotta be able to come back to that hard stop at zero. You gotta be able to come back to that hard stop because the zero is the most important thing. You gotta start each note on zero, right? That gets back to the technique piece, not so much the timing. But you gotta start each note on zero or else you're not gonna get that cool swell effect. I mean, look, we could start it on two and you still get a swell or maybe even on like one, right? You still get a swell, but it's not as effective as if you're on zero. That's where you're going to get that violin attack, for that violin bow attack. Okay guys, so Dickie Betts volume swells on a Les Paul. That's pretty much all there is to it. Hopefully this was helpful. I took a look on YouTube. I didn't see too many other folks out there talking about this topic. So hopefully this is something that's useful for you folks and um, maybe something that's not really been covered on YouTube before. So. Good luck with it. If you got any questions, please feel free to ask them down in the comments below, and I'll be glad to answer them as soon as I can. Thanks, guys. Take care, and happy picking.